This is Journeys with Ryan Frank. Conversations about culture and the issues affecting First Nations people in BC. Brought to you by Prince Rupert Port Authority. Linking a world of opportunity. Online, rupertport.com. Good evening. Welcome to Journeys. I'm your host, Ryan Frank, and we're on your nation, your station, CFNR. On tonight's episode of Journeys, I have Christian Apostolovsky from our news department as I uh, talk to him just a bit about this COVID-19 situation, what's going on basically around the world and in Canada here. So uh, again, we talked a little bit about some of the issues that I, that I have seen and some of the stuff that he's seen. Also, trying to get some information out to you. Uh, if you want to find out more information about COVID-19, go to the World Health Organization website, which is who.int, or go to the Center for Disease Control's uh, website, which is cdc.gov. Now, I also talk a bit about social media and how insane that stuff is. I think it's fear-mongering. I think people are getting freaked out because of the stuff they're seeing on there, and a lot of it is misinformation. So uh, I think uh, that that's really important as well. So stay tuned. After these messages, I have my conversation with Christian Apostolovsky from our news department about COVID-19. Welcome back to Journeys. I'm your host, Ryan Frank, and we're on your nation, your station, CFNR. Okay, here is my conversation with Christian Apostolovsky from our news department about the COVID-19 situation. All right, uh, well, I have Christian uh, Postolevsky here from our news department here at CFNR. Now, today's episode, I wanted to talk about some of this uh, COVID-19 and what's going on with everything because there's a lot of stuff going on on social media, uh, which I think is actually... It could be simultaneously be the best and the worst thing going on for this uh, situation, but I'd like to get uh, your opinion, Christian, about that. Um, but I would like to talk a little bit about what you've heard in the news because you're right in the middle of all this stuff. Uh, but first, uh, how are you doing, Christian? I'm doing pretty good. It yeah. has been quite busy the last two days with uh, everything's getting canceled, things are yeah. happening. You know, honestly, like this is one of the situations where things are updating by the hour and yeah. new information becomes public at random times. So it's an interesting scenario to be in the middle of them. I bet, man. Uh, first off, um, when did, I guess this when this first uh, outbreak started to happen and started to hit the news, I was, well, what, a week ago? How long ago? Uh, so the first reported cases came from Wuhan, and I believe they were in late December is when Oops, okay. it really began. But we didn't see international spread until, I would say, a couple of weeks after that. There was some pretty good containment, but then people traveling to and from China really started to see spreads. And then luckily here in BC, we've seen, I think it's been four or five community cases, which is super low compared to, you know, if you look at Italy, Egypt, Iran, they've had pretty big community transmission. And all, all that means basically is that you're not patient zero so let's say you come into the country with the virus so i travel to egypt i get the virus i come back i would be the patient zero i'm the first person infected within my own line right so i'm considered an r0 which means i've infected nobody yeah so community transmission means that every for every single person that gets infected they would infect somebody else in the community in the within the community so we've seen that mostly in the lower mainland with care homes so there's been multiple care givers i guess we could call them they're like they're the people that oversee the elderly and help in the homes and then we've seen a couple of elderly as well be infected so that's our main community transmission at this point okay so now when you hear the term community cases that's what you're talking about it's like the secondary transmission throughout the community yeah that that's exactly what something? you're hearing yeah okay so because i've heard that term community cases i wasn't sure if that meant that there was a case in a community and no one knew where it came from or that this is actually just means the secondary transmission uh, within a community the scariest thing that i think that provincial health officers have constantly said yeah is that when you when you break it down, when you do not know who patient zero is or where somebody contracted the virus, that's a terrifying moment because now you have to backtrack and figure out who they came in contact with and who might be the one spreading. Okay, now this is the process. So what's the process they would have to go through then? They would have to basically to ask that person where they traveled. They would have to piece together basically everywhere they've gone since they traveled, say internationally, or potentially where they could have started with the infection themselves and then 
transmission occurred after that, right? Yeah, that's exactly right. So they obviously there's like it's like pseudo detective work effectively where yeah. you're looking at interviewing the person and trying to figure out as much background as you can, where they've been, who they've talked to, what they've touched who might be infected. So that happens a lot at airports, especially with these people traveling in. Yeah. So when they travel in, they'll land, they'll touch some stuff, and then everyone that came in contact with them touching stuff will be asked to either quarantine or check for symptoms or take temperatures, whatever. Yeah. Because it's really important to stop the spread before it can compound. Because we've seen it even in Italy. Yeah. That was a huge oh, case yes. where a small amount of people were infected and it blew up you see an entire country under quarantine that's pretty terrifying okay so let's let's talk about that a little bit here so what was the case in italy then like what my understanding was they just didn't react quick enough and uh, people didn't tell people to to uh watch wash their hands properly uh they didn't they didn't ban uh large gatherings right away i think right is that yep. kind of what happened or what happened in italy so a lot of what's been happening around the world, especially with Iran, I think Iran did a pretty good job, but every, everywhere around the world, effectively, you're looking at, you have to be really, really quick about reacting to this because it can spread very quickly. Yes, of course. And yeah. even in Canada here, the liberals have come under a lot of scrutiny because they aren't reacting fast enough. Crazy. So okay. what, what ended up happening is like, if you're not closing borders, you're not closing these big gatherings, it can spread pretty quickly. And then... If somebody's not reporting their cases, if they themselves are not willing to show that they have the initiative to say, hey, I'm sick, what's going on? And stay at home. Yeah. And we see that a lot of people are scrutinizing works because they're not allowing people sick days. And even the states is having a huge amount of problems because they are not doing enough to actually curb the spread. And yeah. luckily in Canada here, we're pretty good. We've been doing a lot to stop it. And I think there's still some things further we can do. But being proactive, and if you're not proactive, it can spread rapidly. Okay, okay. So now this is something I want to talk about for people is I feel like people are seeing this uh, the banning of these large gatherings and advis advisories against travel or self-quarantine you're hearing. Like, I feel like people are using that as a sign of fear. And I feel, and I really, what I think it is, is people need to understand that's a precautionary me uh, measure. They're doing that because exactly what Christian is saying is they want to slow the the uh, spread. Now, I've heard this term flatten the curve. Now, what that actually means, if you've heard that term flatten the curve, what that means they're talking about on a chart, if you were to chart the spread of the disease, the, well, the, the disease usually has a lot of people infected initially. So that curve goes straight up. And that means it's a lot of people getting infected. So what they want to do is flatten that curve, which means slow the, the, the transmission of the disease, and that curve doesn't go so high, doesn't shoot so high. It actually slowly climbs and gives our healthcare system, our frontline workers, a better opportunity to, to combat this and slow the transmission. Right, Christian? That is exactly right. And I think it can be scary, but one of the things that you want to avoid in a situation like this is overloading your health resources. Yeah. If it's like a steady trickle of like, we've had it pretty good in BC where you have like one or two cases happening a day, maybe like five a day, you know, it, it still seems like it's increasing a lot, but the point is that they can all have the amount of care that they need to get better. And we still see people recovering every day. And that's really important to keep in mind is that this isn't a death sentence. This isn't the end of the world. Totally. This is showing flu-like symptoms. You might, it might be more severe for some people, it might be less, but at the end of the day, we've had one death in BC and it was an at-risk patient and the BC provincial health officer identified that and said there's potential for at-risk people and elderly compromised immune systems. Those are the at-risk people. And we want to slow the spread because somebody like me or you, we're, we're going to get sick. It's going to suck for a little while, but we're going to come out of it. Yeah. Somebody with a compromised immune system may not be so lucky. So we want to slow the spread, not just for ourselves, but for the community. You're, you're protecting other people. You are. And you see, the thing is, I know people, I have family, I have friends that are... Uh, in a compromised position. Some some people have compromised immune systems, some are elderly, but the thing is, is that we talk in uh, First Nation communities, we talk about how important our elders are. Our elders have a lot of uh, information and knowledge. Well, we wanna protect those uh, those people, especially the people that have compromised immune systems too. You don't wanna put them at risk, right? So that's why, that's why people are giving this information. Wash your hands. If you're feeling sick, stay home. Self-quarantine. Now, when people talk about self-quarantine for, I think it's like for two weeks. 14 you, days. Yeah, yeah. For, so tell me what that, what, what is self-quarantine? One of the things that needs to be cleared up a little bit is the reason that people want to self-quarantine is 
A, in early stages of the virus, it can actually be asymptomatic, which basically yes, means that yeah. you're not going to exhibit this cold-like or this flu-like symptoms. You could still be a carrier and you could still be spreading it, but you'll have no idea. I and see, then if yep. you get tested for it, you might also, they might not be able to identify it either. So if you have, you may have come in contact with it or you think you might be at risk, super important, stay at home, don't go anywhere. But the virus can manifest somewhere between two and 14 days as well. So it can be early stages or late stages okay. that you get it. So it can be like right away. It's like, oh, I touched something yesterday and I infected myself can happen. And then you stay home for 14 days. Now, I mean, you see it on social media all the time. People are buying like dozens of bags of toilet paper. Like, <laughs> what, what are you going to, it oh doesn't like, it would be one thing if they're buying food, but what are you going to do with all, all the toilet paper? Like, that's a whole different story. But yeah, so be prepared for it. So Christian, in your uh, dealings and exchanges, uh, communication with various uh, organizations like First Nations Health or the Health Authority, have they said anything around the self-quarantining for 14 days? So we've had the luxury of our provincial health officer uh, and... Oh, God, I can't remember his title either. But it was Adrian Dix and Bonnie Henry. They're he's the, the health minister. He's I the believe. health minister. Yeah, I couldn't remember his exact title, but they've we've had the very kind luxury of them giving us daily updates. Actually, every day at 3.30, you can tune in. Usually some media outlet out there is covering it or yeah. somebody's live tweeting it, whatever. But So they've given us updates daily. And one of the most important things that they've said is that there is actually protocol in place if anybody if this breaks out in the north because rural first nations and smaller communities in the north are hugely at risk and even today we saw Haida Gwaii um the, the three travel advisory yeah the itself. travel advisory came out if you're traveling out of it take precautions and if you're coming back definitely wash your hands make sure that you're coughing and sneezing into your arm because yeah. a smaller community is going to be hit way harder yeah. because there's going to be there's a higher likelihood of local transmission so it's more important for these small communities to take a bigger proactive step than try to react when it happens. But there is in place something for the North. They haven't explicitly said what, because obviously we don't need it yet. Yeah. But once it comes in, obviously I'm assuming some funding, some more medical aid will be sent out, but yeah. there is something in place. So there's no real reason to panic at this point. Yeah. I mean, like now again, like what are people like, like social media, man? Like what the heck are we going to do yeah. about that? Like, because I feel like I've seen people posting some, what I what I feel are reckless, reckless posts that are just it is. that just cause people fear you know and yeah. i don't i don't think that, that i think that they need to be more responsible about the information people are posting people need to make sure that the the stuff they're posting is from a credible source like i see people posting i heard and i'm like what the heck is that did i yeah. you, anybody could post anything in that situation and, and then what does that mean somebody watches reads that shares it it's just like the disease it spreads like crazy except that we're talking yep. about on social media right like i feel like we need to have social media distance i think social media <laughs> is like such a big player in all of this you are right and i think more than more than anything if people are listening to this right now they have to understand that we're talking about this and yeah i know a lot about the issue because i've been in the middle of it and we yeah. might have a lot of gathered information the most important thing to do before you even listen to anything I've said or believe anything I've said, go to the CDC, go to World Health Organization. They will know more than anybody else yeah, will know. I yeah. might have, you know, let's say I have 90% of the answers. That's fantastic. That yeah. other 10%, I wouldn't know. And they would know right off the bat. And yeah. they'll be able to get you in contact with somebody that knows. So then, so, okay, so now you are uh, Joe Citizen. So you want to find out about it. Where would you go first? What website would you go to first? Or what would you do first? So if you want to find out more about it, if I want to know more about it, the WHO's website or the CDC's website, okay, the Canadian so WHO is yeah. the World Health Organization. The CDC is the Center for Disease Control. Both of them go by the acronym, I believe, online. So if you Googled CDC or WHO, I yep. think their website's like cdc.gov.ca or something. Well, we have a computer here. Let's check it out right now. Let's go to CDC. I'm just going to Google CDC. Okay, first thing comes up, Center for Disease Control and Prevention at cdc.gov. Now, I'm pretty sure the World Health Organization is similar. I'm just going to put WHO for World Health Organization, Google, and there it comes up, who.int. So it's international then? Yeah. So that's the website for the World Health Organization. Click on, actually, I can even see it on the Google listing. It has coronavirus disease as one of the links. So I could click on that. This is the World Health Organization. They've got videos about their press conferences. Uh, all the, protect yourself. Your questions answered. Let's go through it here. 
What is COVID-19? Well, guess what? They have it here, right? Tells you what it is, where it started. Wuhan, China in December 2019. Christian, yeah. look at you. Yeah, I remember it. <laughs> yeah, nice job. It's been a while, actually. People, uh, it started very small and then it kind of exploded pretty quick. What can I do to protect myself and prevent the spread of disease? Now, you said... Wash your hands. Wash your hands. Don't. One of the biggest things: do not touch your face. If you're outside yeah. and you're touching surfaces, like wash your hands first, and yeah. then touch your face. Right. D don't get panicked and say, "Oh my God, I touched like a railing or something. I'm going to get it." No, <laughs> no just say, "Okay, I'm not going to touch my face. I'm not going to." Yeah. Because you don't want to put in your mucous membranes. You don't want to put in your mouth, your yes. eyes, anywhere okay. it can contact the. Okay, let's like, see what the WHO says. Okay, what can I do to protect myself and prevent the spread of disease? This is from their website. I'm going to click on it. Holy, there's lots. There is. There's, there's always going to be a <laughs> okay, lot. Of okay, okay. So it says right here, I'm just going to read some of them. Uh, regularly and thoroughly clean your hands with alcohol-based hand rub or wash them with soap and water. So that's another question. You can just use regular hand soap, right? You can. And I oh. think it's um, one of the things that I've heard more recently is that hand soap will still be the most effective because you can definitely get every part of your hand. Okay. It'll okay. disjoin all the germs. It'll put them out. It's just a lot... I always find it a lot safer, and typically when I see people recommend it, it's always wash your hands before doing anything else. Yeah, okay. Now, uh, maintain at least one meter distance between yourself and anyone who is coughing or sneezing. Why? Because the coughing or sneezes that then spray small liquid droplets from their nose or mouth, which could contain the virus. So if you're close enough to them to, to breathe it in, you can contract it as well. So maintain at least three feet distance. I don't think we talked about that. Did no, we so social distancing is something that we've heard more recently about. Yeah. It's been like a hot topic in America, but in Canada, it's like within the last week, people are like, distance yourself from others at least like six feet apart make sure that if somebody if they're coughing or if they're coughing or sneezing yeah i think just in general people have i mean people have taken the practice even if they're not coughing or sneezing yeah it's i think very, so too it's very easy to just kind of lose track of your mind and somebody coughs next and you're like oh don't i don't even care yeah, yeah you missed it yeah. entirely so uh that is a good that's a good point uh okay now here it is that's what he said the number three point from the world health organization what uh, what to do to prevent it Avoid touching eyes, nose, or mouth. It says why. Hands touch many surfaces and can pick up viruses. Once contaminated, hands can transfer the virus to your eyes, nose, or mouth. And then, of course, it enters your body and makes you sick. That's exactly what you said. Yep. So, again, World Health Organization, uh, go check it out. Uh, what else can you do? Make sure you or the people around you follow good respiratory hygiene. This means covering your mouth when you, or your nose with your bent elbow or tissue when you cough or sneeze. That's exactly what you said. Yeah, it's really important to follow that practice because if you cough or sneeze in your hand and you touch anything, it it's spreads, basically yeah. like coughing on the surface. Now, Christian, I've, this is something that, and I know that you know this, is that we, we deal with the flu season every year they and they say the same things. They do. Every year about this, right? Wash your hands. Don't touch your eyes, nose, or mouth. They, uh, I, I think the social distancing stuff is a... I've never heard social distancing. It's fairly distancing. new, yeah. yeah. And I'm going to start a new term, the social media distancing. We so should do that. That means you block posts or you block... Do not read uh, I heard posts or don't share I heard someone posts. Yeah, those are the words. I think no, at the end of the day, no matter what, if I'm looking on Twitter or Facebook and I see an individual person posting something... I will immediately fact check it because I can never believe what a single person 100%, says. 100%, 100%. So that's social media distancing. So there's social distancing and I'm calling it now social media distancing, unless you've heard of that already. I have not, but that's a great idea and we <laughs> should move forward with that. I think it's a good one because I feel like social media causes a lot of unnecessary fear. Okay, let's move on to the next one here. Stay home if you feel unwell, if you have a fever, cough, difficulty breathing uh, and seek medical attention. But it says call in advance, which is exactly what you said. It's like, don't go there in person. Yeah. It's like to call the, the local health center then. Is that what you would say? Or is there a line set up? Oh, there's yeah. a number, I believe, isn't there? There is actually a number. So the number is 811. It would, con it would put you in contact with the provincial health authorities. Yeah. And what that would do is they would be able to give you advice. And that's really important is getting advice from experts. Because if you think you have it, going to a clinic and overloading a clinic would be pretty bad. On top of the fact, if you go to a clinic with a lot of other sick people, yeah, it could, you could more spread, spreading, right? Yeah, you could spread what you have and then catch what somebody else has. So there's a lot of bad things that could happen. So they'll give you advice, and they may tell you to go to a clinic if you have very mild symptoms, or they may say, "Hey, if you're going, 
maybe be careful of what you're coughing on, distance yourself from other yeah, people. Yeah, yeah. You might even want to call the clinic in advance after receiving information from 811. Okay. So there's going to be a lot of what-if scenarios where they'll give you advice based on what they think is best for you. Okay, so there it is. That's the number. If you haven't heard, all you do is dial 811 on your phone and it'll it'll put you in contact with the experts uh they'll tell you exactly what to do next they'll probably even know they'll know what clinics they can send you to if they want you to go or whatnot right yep. i'm sure they'll ask you what your symptoms are and kind of go through a bit of a checklist i would imagine yep. um okay now the last point that they have on the world health organization website at who.int you'll see coronavirus is one of the first ones i clicked on it and one of the things was qu your questions i clicked on that and the last bullet point on what can I do to protect myself and prevent the spread of disease says, keep up to date on the latest COVID-19 hotspots. That's the cities or local areas where COVID-19 is spreading widely. If possible, avoid traveling to these places, especially if you are an older person or have diabetes, heart or lung disease. Why? Because you have a higher chance of catching COVID-19 in one of these areas. Well, that kind of makes sense, doesn't it? It does. So... Christian, I call this uncommon sense, you know, it's yeah. not that common, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's really not. When I, I think at the end of the day, and I've had calls, I've talked to people, I know that people are scared yeah. and I understand why, but at the end of the day, you just have to not panic because if you do catch it, it's about doing what's next, right? It's not about, oh, well, this is the end for me. It's like, you have to just keeping calm in all situations is the way you overcome disaster, right? Yeah. So you'll never see yourself in any sort of a disaster we've had sars we've had ebola we've had um zika we've had in the past swine Spanish flu, flu bird swine flu, flu h1n1 yeah. there's an unbelievable list of things that happen every year where the virus is mutating changing yeah and the reason that we always overcome them is because we listen to these health professionals yes, we stay calm yes, yes. there's no if you do not overreact and you listen to what these professionals i really do want to stress the word professionals say yeah if you listen to them, you're going to be okay. And yeah. that's what matters at the end of the day. So, and again, I, I, I call it social media distancing. When you hear your friends or family or someone that's on your friend list posting something and it's from someone else, say they share a post of somebody and it's just another regular person. Don't, you can't believe that stuff. You can't take it for face value. You need to immediately try to fact check it or go to the World Health Organization website. They have all the information there. Go to the Center for Disease Control's website, CDC, cdc.gov. So the Center for Disease Control, cdc.gov. And they have all the information there. Don't believe these posts on Facebook. I, I just or Twitter, or whatever, Instagram, whatever social media you get your information from, you really need to fact check this stuff. And I call it social media distancing. And I think um, on your same topic, when somebody says that a event's getting canceled or they're closing offices or universities closing, it's not because they're infected. It's not because no. everyone's at risk. It's really important to note that that's being very proactive because if, if it ever did occur where, let's say, like some college student got sick, then if nobody's at school, who's he going to spread it to? Exactly. See, this that's a good thing, right? It should, it should alleviate fears. It shouldn't make you more fearful, no. right? Because I feel like it's, to me, I think that's a great thing. Like, okay, we were supposed to be, today, I was, should have been on the road going to Kelowna for the Junior All-Native Basketball Tournament, okay? And I love that tournament. Uh, yesterday, when the news got, came out that it was canceled, there was a lot of heartbroken kids and coaches and community like members because they worked hard to go to that tournament, and I and I really feel for them. Uh, the Junior All Native Committee was put in a very difficult position, but they made the right decision. And it sucks for everybody, but it was the right decision because, like you've already said, it's like these are precautionary measures. You don't want to go be looking backwards and be like, "What if we had done that?" or "We should have done this." In this in this case, it's like, "Well, let's do this so we don't need to have to have the, these these regrets afterwards." You know, or these 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 uh, twenty twenty clear thoughts when everything's settled. We could have done a lot more, and I think that's what SARS and what well, you've talked about all these previous diseases yep. have taught not just Canada but also the world is how to actually respond to these things is you need to shut stuff down you can't you can't just wait because like what happens one person infected goes into uh, 10 people guess what 10 people are infected those 10 people go into 10 more people each one of them is it, it is it's exponential so yep. this is what it's all precautionary and it's to help protect yourself your family your friends 
our communities, our cities, our country, our world, right? With especially with Junior All Native, and I think it is a good point to bring up. People travel from all over. So this yeah. would have been every small community would have had like these small first na- rural First Nations, yeah. Haida Gwaii, you have all these island First Nations, Lower all Mainland. Around here, we have our Nass Valley teams. You uh, do, yeah. yeah. All of them, yeah. And it becomes all that more important that when you make that decision, you think to yourself that even if everyone shows up and nobody's infected, it's a happy-go-lucky time. You have a tournament, everyone enjoys watching it, and it's just fun for everybody. But in the off chance that one person's infected, imagine sending all those people back to every community across BC. 100%. That would be such a big detriment. And I think being, and this is still important proactivity compared to being reactive. That's a very proactive move because there would have been huge reaction across BC if anybody got infected. Yeah. So this this was a good call by them. And it really does suck because I know people were looking forward to it. Oh, big time. It sucks for everybody. And I feel for them because I even have friends of mine uh that you know they had to tell their children and they're like one friend of mine had to tell his daughter his daughter and she was upset she was crying obviously because she's worked hard for this moment and it's i've i've i'm definitely heartbroken for those uh kids that wanted to play uh you know and it does suck but again preventative it's proactive we're trying to slow it limit it and flatten the curve like i was talking about earlier right we don't want this big spike in cases we wanted a slower uh increase of, of cases so that the demand on our healthcare system and our frontline workers is reduced really in yeah. the end um okay well i think i don't know is there anything else other questions that people are asking you or stuff questions that you had we could uh, go down some more of these other questions they have I think the final big point that I have on all of this is that we have seen the reduction now in the amount of uh, flights we're seeing. So I think it's been reduced by half, actually. I I don't exactly know the number on that one, actually, but we have seen a reduction on foreign flights simply because of the risk of the spread. Now, in America, we've seen entirely they've stopped travel from, I think it's like China, Italy, Iran, and in Europe. I think I, I believe those are the big ones that have been hit. So you're not seeing any travel in and out from there, but you're still seeing goods shipped back and forth. Yeah, okay, okay. And we're seeing something similar here where we're getting less flights in and out. I don't think they're limiting it to zero for the amount of travel that's happening, but people are asking to be co- closely monitored. If you exhibit symptoms, obviously don't travel, stay home. And then cruise ship season is being oh, yeah. pushed back until July. So we live pretty close to the port of Rupert, and that's going to be a big hit for them because I was looking yeah. online, and they've got like you know a couple hundred people on each cruise, like up to a thousand or something. Oh. And it's like yeah, think- the economy. That's a whole other uh, discussion too. And yeah. uh, actually, what I am going to try to do is I'm trying to get a supply chain expert on. I want to talk to him or her about. Uh, about what the effects are on the supply chain. So what uh, you know, what could happen as far as goods coming in and out of the country, what's currently happening. I do have a contact at the Port of Prince Rupert, so I'm waiting to hear back from them. So uh, I'll uh, keep you posted on that. Hopefully next week I'll have this uh, expert on and we can start talking about that and uh, see what else is happening. But I am gonna finish on a, few, a couple of different things. Uh, one is uh, if you need to find out information, go to the World Health Organization website. We just went to it and went through some of the questions. They have a a, a ton of questions there and all the answers too, right? So, and they give you references. So go to their website, the World World Health Organization, which is who.int. You can also go to uh, the Center for Disease Control, which is cdc.gov. You can get tons of information there. Now, also, if you are feeling sick and you're, you're worried about it, you can dial in BC here in the north. You can dial 811 on your phone. That connects you with, Christian? Our provincial health authorities. Provincial health authorities. And those are the? The experts. The, the professionals. Experts, the pros. So you're going to so dial 811. They'll connect you with the professionals, a provincial health authority. You can let them know what your situation is, and they'll help you, okay? Uh, and don't and, and my last and one of my last points because I have another one. I have, actually have a tip for you, but uh, my what last point is social media distancing. Do not believe this stuff on there. It's just going to make you freak out a thick a little bit because I've seen stuff on there and it's fear mongering, Christian. It's I was going through a Twitter thread last night and I really could not believe some of the things. Like 
it, it makes me I, I know all the facts and i'm in the middle of this i'm like oh my god this is terrifying could i imagine if i'm just some random person seeing yes, this yes you see so social media distancing i think you need to fact check everything you see if you just see some i heard or they're sharing some other joe blow citizens post don't believe it you need to fact check it go to the world health organization these are the experts uh so definitely uh do that now i will finish on uh i'm gonna call it my res tip because i uh everyone's going crazy about the toilet paper uh, which is ridiculous okay first of all toilet paper is made in bc and made in canada we're never going to run out of it we got a gazillion trees with leaves which is by the way (laughs) but uh the res tip i'm going to give you guys all is if you separate your two ply guess what (laughs) double the amount of toilet paper oh that's genius that's genius right there (laughs) so separate your two ply double your amount of toilet paper you're welcome you're welcome well christian thanks for coming on buddy i appreciate you uh talking with me about covid19 and and all this stuff thanks for having me on as always and there you have it that was my conversation with christian apostolovsky about covid19 uh just you know just crazy stuff going on out there again all this stuff is precautionary okay so this should make you happy that we're making these decisions not get you scared or fear about what's happening now when the sars stuff hit we learned a big lesson around not just here but around the world about how to deal with stuff like this so can Canceling big events, not not traveling uh, to the U.S. in this situation or abroad uh, is it all precautionary to help reduce the spread. And again, all of this, all the measures you see being taken is to help flatten the curve, which you have heard. Now, like I said in the conversation, it's usually he, you see a huge spike in cases because we're, people don't take these measures governments cities don't take these measures to stop big gatherings and uh coughing into your 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 arm stuff like that proper hygiene uh social distancing like it's all precautionary so we can flatten the curve so we don't have a huge spike of cases and then it overwhelms our health system we want to flatten that curve out so we have a a more of a a gradual spike or a gradual increase of, of cases and that way our health system is, is can better handle it. I mean, it's probably still going to take a lot of work and it's going to take some time, but we all need to do this together, right? So let's stay calm and also practice social media distancing. I'm calling it that. I term that because I think a lot of people are being really reckless with their posts on Facebook, sharing rumors and stuff like that. I've saw some people that I, that I feel are very intelligent people posting stuff like I heard or uh, stuff someone told me and I was like you got to be kidding me it just all it does is create unnecessary fear in communities that they're not even living in so I, I do not listen to those posts fact check everything go to the World Health Organization's website they have all the information there they have questions they have videos They have all sorts of stuff there, who.int, or go to the Center for Disease Control, cdc.gov. Also, now, the number that you heard, 811, that's for if you're actually sick, okay? If you have questions about the disease, do not call this number. You don't want to overwhelm this number. That number is for people that are actually sick, and then what they want you to do is to call this number. They don't want you to go straight to the clinic. They want you, or to your healthcare uh, practitioner, what they want you to do is call 811, and then... And that person will be uh, that that will connect you to a professional and i'm sure what the whole will happen is they'll uh, go through a checklist ask you what's going on symptoms you're traveling where have you traveled uh and then they'll give you the the proper advice what to do as far as next steps okay so just uh, again this this thing is not it's not like a death sentence okay people are freaking out and they don't need to uh, most people recover 80, whatever it was eight, high 80% of people. So it's, it's, uh, you know, just, just maintain your calm and also have some common sense around this. Okay. And, and take care of each other out there too. Uh, we're all in this together. So let's help each other and we're all going to make it through all this. I guarantee you. And it's, it's, it's a learning situation, but also just be compassionate with each other, be patient with each other. And uh, again, like I said, go to those websites, World Health Organization and the CDC. So who.int and cdc.gov and you'll get all the information you need. Okay. So uh, take care. I hope you uh, enjoyed this conversation.
All right. Let me know what you thought of today's episode. Hit me up on Facebook, CFNR Network, and leave your comments. Also, go to our website, cfnrfm.ca, and go to the App Store and download the CFNR app. That's it for me today. Till next time, let's see where the journey takes us. This has been Journeys with Ryan Frank. Join us next time for more conversations about culture and the issues affecting First Nations people in BC. Brought to you by Prince Rupert Port Authority. Linking a world of opportunity. Online, rupertport.com.